That's Nick. And that's Joseph. And today we're here to talk about Wicked, the eighth narrative feature directed by John M. Chu, which Universal Pictures is releasing November 22nd, 2024. Do I know a John Chu film? Uh, yeah, I think you do know, know a couple of John M. Chu films. He's had a, an interesting ascension, uh, considering he started out with Step Up 2, The Streets, and Step Up 3D. Uh, he went on to do some other Hollywood franchise direct like G.I. Joe Retaliation and Gem and the Holograms and Now You See Me Too. Uh, but then I think kind of in 2018 broke through with uh, something that he seemed to have a little more passion for, which was Crazy Rich Asians and then In the Heights. Oh, what is Wicked about? Alphaba, a misunderstood young woman because of her green skin, and Glinda, a popular girl, become friends at Shiz University in the Land of Oz. After an encounter with the wonderful Wizard of Oz, their friendship reaches a crossroads. What's your pull quote? Quite remarkably wicked, or at least the first half of it, pulsates with emotion and charm, thanks to an exceptional Cynthia Erivo, who is warmly aided by a quartet of enjoyable supporting characters. Much like the Wizard of Oz might say, a film is judged by how much it's loved by others. Hmm. Mine. Wicked delivers on all fronts and should satisfy fans of the musical. <laughs> Very simple. Uh, yeah, so if people have not read the book... By Gregory Maguire, published in 1995, which I did. Or have seen the musical. Mm -hmm. This story is about the Wicked Witch of the West. It's her origin story. It's her origin story. So... The opening of this film is we see the Wicked Witch of the West dying, which is the end of The Wizard of Oz. So the I'm melting, except that we don't see that. We just see her boots and clothes like disintegrated on the ground. Mm -hmm. And then she's burned in effigy in Munchkin Land like the Wicker Man. And everyone's celebrating. Mm -hmm. And then Glinda, the good witch, played by Ariana Grande, she comes down in her little bubble and sort of greets everyone. And right as she's about to head out, because she seems kind of bored with them, someone asks her, weren't you two friends? And Glinda says, yeah, we knew each other back in school. And then we flash back to the story of that. But it starts with Elphaba being born. She's the product of an affair. Mm -hmm. So her mother was married to a man. To uh, the, is the mayor of Munchkinland. The governor. By, the governor, played by Andy Nyman. Mm -hmm. But the way this movie shows it, which I thought was kind of scandalous, is that her mom is just a hoe and hooked up with some man, got pregnant while they were drinking something out of a green bottle. Mm -hmm. So like getting sauced up, I guess. And then nine months later, here pops out this green baby. And the father is disgusted, like revolted, repulsed. Mm -hmm. And in this world, animals are intellectual creatures who can speak. So all of the staff working in the governor's home are animals. Mm -hmm. Specifically, the nanny is a bear. Mm -hmm. And the governor tells the bear, throw this baby away. I think the bear's name is Dulce Bear. Mm -hmm. She seems to love Alphaba and says, don't worry, I'll take care of you. So then we see Alphaba grow up into like maybe a 10-year-old and she's still an outcast. The kids are making fun of her. But we can see that Elphaba has powers, like a Stephen King character. Yeah, like a Carrie or Firestarter. Yes. But Elphaba has a sister. Mm -hmm. uh, Nessa. Nessa Rose, yeah. And good old Nessa's in a wheelchair. And the father, the governor, favors Nessa. Mm -hmm. So we see Nessa and Elphaba grown up and Grown up Alphaba, grown up as in like, I guess, I'm confused with how old everyone's supposed to be, but... Especially the, the children at school. Yes. yes. But grown up Alphaba is played by Cynthia Erivo. Mm -hmm. And Alphaba has to accompany her sister to university, Shiz University. Mm -hmm. I could not get over that name. And when she gets there, there's an incident that causes Alphaba to get upset and that's usually when her magic pops out because mm -hmm. she doesn't seem to have control of it. When she's emotional. Mm -hmm. When she's emotional. So Alphaba tears some shit up. Michelle Yao is a professor at the university. Madame Morrible. She's the professor of sorcery. Mm -hmm. So a lot happens in that moment because that's when Alphaba and Galinda, which is her original name, meet for the first time. 
and they don't like each other. And Galinda is very much like Elle Woods from Legally Blonde. She was actually the, another Reese Witherspoon character. She reminded me of Tracy Flick from Election. Oh, yes. If she were played by Brittany Murphy. Yeah. <laughs> but it's important to know that Galinda, Ariana Grande's character, she wants to major in sorcery. Mm -hmm. And she confronts Michelle Yao, like, I know all about you. I sent in a letter. And I think some of the funnier moments are Michelle Yao interacting with Ariana Grande because she doesn't like her. She's like, I got your application and I... I don't see her for you, girl. She's like, I'm not impressed. I'm not impressed at all. But Michelle Yeoh witnesses Cynthia Revo's magic and pretends that it was her herself who did it to cover for Elphaba. But then she confronts Elphaba and says, listen, I'm going to make you my student. So I'm going to enroll you in the university. I don't care what your dad says. So then we see that now Elphaba and Galinda have to be roommates. And for the like middle hour of the movie, they do not get along. But there's an incident that brings them closer together. And mm -hmm. we it's kind of a circuitous route, which we can get to. But everything culminates in the reason Michelle Yao's character is so interested in Alphaba is because Michelle Yao is in cahoots with the Wizard of Oz, played by Jeff Goldblum. Mm -hmm. And if you've seen The Wizard of Oz or The Wiz, you know that The Wizard of Oz is a fake. So he and Michelle Yao are trying to find someone who actually knows magic so they can read the book called The Grimmery because mm -hmm. there are all these spells in there. And we can talk more about it, but I was a little confused with how much magic Michelle Yao has. Not seemed, much. Not much. Not enough to do anything. A touch. A touch of magic. She has a touch. Mm -hmm. So when Jeff Goldblum sees that Elphaba's the real deal and she reads out of The Grimmery, which is what causes all the monkeys to get wings, he kind of confesses like, well, I, I need you to join me so I can change Oz how I want it. Mm -hmm. And a major side plot is that there's this whole rhetoric about animal culture because it seems like someone is trying to like oppress the animals, like taking their rights away. Mm -hmm. Specifically, there's one goat who's a professor at Shiz. Dr. Dillamond, who's voiced by Peter Dinklage. Oh... I thought I recognized that voice. Anyway, he gets fired. And then it's clear that they want to eradicate like smart animals. And we find out that it's Jeff Goldblum's doing. And he tells Alphaba, well, in order to bring everyone together, we need a common enemy. And I guess the animals got the short end of the stick. Did you notice that uh, when an Alphaba, when uh, she causes the scene at the orientation that the plaque of the wizard that falls off behind it, you see what it was covering up, which was a portrait of animals. Animals leading the school. So Alphaba's not with that. And then the final scene of this two hour, 40 minute movie is Cynthia Revo singing Defying Gravity. Mm -hmm. And she basically tells everyone like, like I'm not gonna stand for this. And we see her leave. The end, mm -hmm. I was very impressed. I was too, because I wasn't particularly looking forward to it. Uh, I saw the musical on Broadway, whatever, 20 plus years ago with um, Kristen Chenoweth and Adina Menzel. And I didn't remember anything except Defying Gravity mm -hmm. and the shock of realizing that the Wicked Witch of the West didn't start out mean. But other than that, I didn't recall much. And I was... You had referenced a movie with Charlize Theron and oh, this, Michelle. The School for Good and Evil, because the, the beginning is not perfect and it, it feels a little like it's cutting a lot of, it feels schmaltzy like that film. And Michelle Yao is also in that. Yes, but it's the quality is much better. The, the performances, everything's better. And I think one of the things I really appreciated is, it, of course, there's a lot of CGI, but you can tell that a lot of grand sets were built. And I think it really does add to the epic nature of it. The majesty. Because my criticism of Gladiator 2, which I'm not sure when that review will come out, but I hated how small the film feels mm -hmm. and how it just seems like it's all green screen. So this movie feels, it almost has the magic of The Wizard of Oz. Almost, not quite. Though. Almost. Uh, the, the, the 1939 version, because there is an earlier version of The Wizard of Oz, um, I, I don't know. I, I think that's hard to beat. But also think of the time when uh, the impressionable time that most of us 
probably sure. saw that film sure. and it's hard and you know i remember being obsessed with margaret hamilton the wicked witch and those flying monkeys i wanted one like i wanted friends <laughs> like that um but the, the other thing since i never seem to forget anything even though i wish i could was when i think of gregory Maguire, when i first got my uh hands on wicked which i probably was in sixth grade when that came out it was because i had read a book he'd written the year bef before called seven spiders spinning Oh. And I remember loving it so much that I had my grandmother buy it for me. But in the author's uh, biography in the back, it mentioned something about him being involved with like uh, youth L GLBT rights or oh. something. And one of my grandparents saw that and they tried to take it away. So I had to go white it out. And I, for some reason, I, every time I hear his name I, or think of it, I think of that moment and feel anger and shame that I had to do that. But very much alphabet. That's a good story. Um, okay, so just going through my notes, I agree that the the beginning felt a little rushed, and particularly Alphaba's birth and how she was conceived. Yeah, because <laughs> the way I said it is how it felt. Like, damn, your mama is loose as hell, and she, the minute her husband walked out the door, there was some other man waiting for her, and she immediately starts romping with him, and they're holding this green bottle of liquor. And I, and then all of a sudden this baby's born green <laughs> and has magic because the baby, when it's born, starts crying and the, the governor, it's supposed dad is screaming, get rid of it. Mm -hmm. And the baby it's would seem causes like everything in the room to levitate. Mm -hmm. And I, maybe it'll be explained in part two, but I thought it was kind of weird that we don't know why she's green. Yes, like I what well, and we see that the bottle that she keeps under her pillow, the green bottle. I, I'm assuming we'll get more information about that because I don't remember. But um, it it also relates to the story about how her sister was born, the way she was, because the Nessa's in a wheelchair. Yes, and she was born early because they were the afraid, governor. The governor was afraid the second baby would be green as well, so he was making their mother eat all of this substance that would probably lighten the baby's skin which makes it's it's interesting because their mother's black so it's like well what color what did you want the what, baby to look what are you like? to but i think it's very effective you know as a i think it an is anecdote it, yeah it, because it's showing how silly these kind of uh stereotypes and preconceived notions are that there's this this beautiful green woman and you're not concerned about the wolf that's uh, pulling her out of your wife, but the fact that she's green. That's a good segue because yes, it's like Cynthia Erivo, I think is the most beautiful cast member mm -hmm. who has, and, but happens to have green skin. So it's funny that everyone thinks she's like, I mean, just horrifyingly ugly. Like she scares people, mm -hmm. but then you have animals walking around talking and doing tasks and teaching students. So, but, but it, it all goes back to what's, you know, what we grow up with, what we're normalized with yes. and, and who we choose to be our common enemy because it often is a choice. Okay. So getting to the school, Bowen, so Ariana Grande's character, mm -hmm. Galinda, she immediately makes these two friends, this gay boy played by Bowen Yang. Boy. Yeah. Uh, Bowen Yang and Bronwyn James. And his little hag. <laughs> And they both look elderly to me. So I, <clears throat> I, I don't understand how old these students are supposed well, to be. Is this like a post-doctorate degree that everyone's going for? <laughs> is this like, uh, yeah, adult school for, I don't understand. But, but combined with the name Shiz, if someone knows the origin of Shiz, that'd be fine. It's the Shiz. I'd, uh, yeah, it's just, it kind of, it's one of those names that takes you out. No. Something I found weird is one of the students at Shiz is a munchkin. Mm -hmm. But he's not little. He's taller than Ariana Grande. <laughs> and I thought that was funny. Like, why wouldn't they have hired little people or a little person to play the munchkin? They've clearly redefined what a munchkin is in this film as opposed to L. Frank Baum's. I didn't like that because he mentions it a couple times and then we see his character stand on a stack of books to be taller next to the handsome, cool kid in school mm -hmm. played by uh, Jonathan Bailey. And it's like, but he's not that short. Uh, the Munchkin is not that short. No. Again, he's taller than <laughs> Ariana Grande. Well, and the one little person they only use as a voice. That's right. <laughs> but I don't know. I, I'm sure that, that there's some political correctness going on there. But I mentioned that character. His name is Buck because he's infatuated with Galinda. 
and at one point asks her to like the strawberry social or whatever it's called and she's like well you know because galinda likes uh the handsome prince man uh Firo. so she gasses buck like oh well you know you see that girl over there nessa in the wheelchair you know it'd be really sweet if you ask her to the dance for me i'd really love that and so he's like, I'll do anything for you. So he asks her, and then we cut to Nessa talking to her sister Alphaba, like, oh my God, you shouldn't be so cold towards Galinda. She's so sweet. Thanks to her, I have this man. And then instantly Nessa is in love with Buck. Didn't that seem crazy? Well, <laughs> I, I got this sense that she wasn't getting as much attention as she needed from anyone sure. other than her doting father. So it was kind of sad. It, it, <laughs> <laughs> it was, especially because he kept looking over at Ariana Grande uh, canoodling with this prince. And you could tell he's just like, I guess this is what I'm settling with. Well, this is a good segue to how they become friends. So it, a bunch of things happen at once. Galinda gets Buck to ask out Nessa. Nessa tells Alphaba, like, you should be nice to Galinda because look at what she did for me. And then one day, Galinda's in her room that she shares with Alphaba, and her two little friends are with her, and Bowen Yang's digging through Ariana Grande's stuff and sees this ugly hat. He's calling it ugly, this black witch's hat. And he's like, ooh, what is this? Why do you have this? Oh, my grandma makes these ugly ass hats. I wouldn't even give it to my worst enemy. Oh, let's give it to Alphaba. So they give it to Alphaba, but now Alphaba is feeling kind towards Galinda because of what she did for her sister, knowing that Galinda wants to be taught by Michelle Yao. Mm -hmm. So Alphaba goes to Michelle Yao and basically says, if you don't give my roommate slash new friend an opportunity to learn from you, I'm going to drop out your little program. So we see Michelle Yao begrudgingly go to the dance, which again was a funny scene, gives Galinda a wand. A training wand. A training wand. And says, here, bitch, you better thank your roommate because I have no faith in your ability. The only reason I'm doing this is because she threatened to leave and I want her. So good luck, even though I don't think you'll need it because you're not going to succeed. So, of course, Galinda's happy, but then now... It felt very much like, uh, what's the movie with Freddie Prince Jr.? She's all that. She's all that. <laughs> because poor um, Alphaba shows up to the dance in her Wednesday Addams uh, outfit and that ugly ass hat. And starts doing this weird dance and everyone's laughing at her. They're all going to laugh at you. Yeah. And then, of course, Galinda jumps in. And because the popular girl jumps in, everyone does the dance. And that's how they become friends. And then subsequently we get the famous song Popular. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I, I thought that their relationship seemed, it's simple but sweet. Yeah, I think both of them do. I was kind of surprised at how effective Ariana Grande ends up seeming, but I think she works very well with Cynthia Revo. And I think that's the scene that kind of clinched that, oh, I, I like this movie more than I thought I would. I agree. I do think that the star should go to Cynthia Revo because she made this character her own. Yes. I feel like Ariana Grande does a good job, but I feel like she's doing a Kristen Chenoweth impression, mm -hmm. which is very effective. But I definitely felt more from Cynthia's character. And I think the most powerful moment or storyline of the film is Elphaba's connection to the goat professor. Mm -hmm. Well, the, the connection to being othered. To being othered. Which is a bit more layered with Cynthia Revo playing this than Adina Menzel. Sure. Arguably. Yeah. Um, again, I was a little confused with Michelle Yao's powers and I was convinced she didn't have any until the point where Alphaba gets the invitation from the wizard to go to Oz and then it starts raining. Mm -hmm. And Michelle Yao says, oh, we can't have this on, this is like a celebratory day for you. Good thing that weather is my specialty. So she's Storm. Basically, and then she kind of like does something that causes the clouds to part. So I, I was a little confused with how much power she has. Because when they get to the Grimmery, Michelle Yao tells Cynthia Revo, it took me years to 
Learn a few words of this Learn language. a few words of the language. And then Cynthia Riva goes, oh, don't worry, I got it. And then she starts reciting an incantation, which is the one that causes the monkeys to have wings. Um, I did think Michelle was quite uh, transfixing and elegant. I thought she looked great. There, there are so many scenes with her. I'm like, she just adds so much. She does. And, you know, I love Jeff Goldblum. And Same. he's Goldblum in this one. And I love it. I will say, though, the movie does feel long. And yes. I don't know that I needed either of them singing. Michelle and Jeff <laughs> don't need to sing talk. We don't need. I, I understand they're in a musical, but they don't need to be singing in it. Okay, I'm saying Galinda because that is her name. And there's a scene where she's mocking the goat because mm -hmm. the goat has a hard time saying it. So when Alphaba goes to Oz, like the train picks her up, everyone's saying goodbye. Galinda's there with her little boyfriend, who by this point has feelings for Alphaba, mm -hmm. which we'll get to, because there's a fun quote from that scene. But she wants to like do something, like show that she, she wants to honor the people with something. So she says, I'm officially changing my name to Galinda in honor of the goat who got fired. And part of his firing was that the new history professor brings in a caged, like, cheetah. Lion. Lion. I think it's supposed to be the cowardly lion. Oh, that makes sense. Yeah, this caged little lion cub. Mm -hmm. And the professor's explaining, like, we invented this new thing called a cage, and this is a way to keep these animals from learning how to speak, which, of course, outrages Alphaba. She does magic to put everyone to sleep except the prince and then they go and try to rest they go take the cub and rescue it she and she puts them to sleep with poppies poppies but then there's a cute scene because the first time the prince met alphaba he almost hit her with his horse mm -hmm. and the horse could talk and the horse was talking shit but it's clear that he likes her mm -hmm. and i kind of really liked that portrayal of the prince because he's a handsome man but he also seems like he likes attention from everyone and is also a little bored with it so there's a lot of representation you see a lot of like what i'm assuming are supposed to be queer people and it all feels very fluid well, to me. And yang yeah, yeah so i mean i did appreciate that mm -hmm. yeah it's uh charming in a way that's not trying too hard because i think that's the mistake a lot of studio films make is characters like these are just they're just trying too hard and it's like he just seems like he is kristen chenoweth and adina menzel do have a cameo when yes when Alphaba and Galinda get to Oz, they're greeted with like a performance to let everyone know what Oz is about. And we see those two ladies singing. Play fighting. Singing. And play fighting, which um, was fun. And one, they looked great. They do. Uh, one of the composers, Stephen Schwartz, also makes a uh, cameo. He's the guard that says, Oz is ready for you when they get there. Oh. I did laugh that her, the invite that Alphaba gets is this, this, this invite is, is non-transferable non -transferable because that's everything I get from a publicist says that. But anyway. What else do you want to say about? Uh, her sister, Nessa wasn't shit. No. I mean, it's supposed to frustrate you, but it's like, she has, your sister done nothing but put her neck out for you. <laughs> And you're, you're so not even mean. checking for her. You're even so at rude. the even at the dance when everyone's laughing at Alphaba, her sister's just sitting there. Like it's so embarrassing. Like, damn. Yeah. That's cold. Uh, again, uh, the film is not being marketed as Wicked Part One, but when it opens, that's what it's called. It says Part One. I was shocked when because someone who had seen it prior to us told me that it was Part One, and and it was shocking. <laughs> So uh, it does feel a little long, but uh, but also I wasn't ever mad or impatient with it either. And musicals are not something I usually like. More often than not, the, the musical number is happening and I feel much like I'm waiting in traffic in a jam and I just have to be patient until it passes and we can move on with the story. But, uh, and, and I don't, I think Divine Gravity is probably the best musical moment in this film. Um, but I, I don't know, Ariana Grande is having fun. It, it's fun enough. I did her first song, which now I can't recall. The first time we hear Cynthia Revo sing, I did get a little teary-eyed. The Wizard and I? Because her voice is so... Where she's running? Yes. Yep. Yeah. I did get teary-eyed because um, she sings the hell out of those songs. She does. And she, there's a level of emotionality watching her that I think makes this transcend 
the trappings that it could have. And I do think that her and Ariana Grande make a, a cute pairing. Well, it makes you sad in the end that they're not going to be able to be friends. Right. After kind of this hard won understanding. But I would look forward to watching part two. Uh, yeah, for sure. What would you give Wicked part one? Three and a half. I think it's very good. I would give it three and a half out of five. Join us on Patreon and listen to our podcast. Bye.